Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here at the Ultimate Reloader Cerakote facility, and what I wanted to do in this video was talk about two things. First, I wanted to talk about what to look for in a quality Cerakote oven that's gonna work really well for you. I've used the ovens at Cerakote World Headquarters for the advanced training and the basic training that they did for certified applicator training. I've had two different brands of ovens, two different types, and throughout that process, I've learned about what works for a Cerakote oven and what doesn't. Second, we're gonna talk about whether you should look at a DIY solution or a pre-built solution. There's no one answer for everybody. So we're gonna get into the nitty gritty factors for both approaches so that you can decide what's best for you. Okay, so starting with what do you look for in an oven? The first thing I'm thinking about is the internal capacity. We do a lot of rifle barrels, some of which are ELR barrels. You know, these are 40 inches long in some cases, and that means we need a tall oven. We need a tall oven that can handle barreled actions, barrels, and chassis, and other long and kind of skinny parts, right? So the oven doesn't have to be five feet wide or five feet deep, but it's gotta have five feet of height to it in order to accommodate the kind of parts that we're gonna do. If you're starting out with coating and you're doing tiny parts, you might find a used oven, like a cooking oven and use that, or even a toaster oven to get started, right? It's all about what you're doing and the kind of capacity that you need. Second thing I'm thinking about is racking options. So we need a place to hang parts internally all of the ovens that I've had here at Ultimate Reloader have hanging options built into the ceiling of the interior of the oven, and that is just makes it easier to get started. You could always add that kind of a thing, but it's definitely something that you're gonna want. A covered heating element. This is important. If you don't cover the heating element, if you can see it with your naked eye, uh, again, it'll have perforations. You might see parts of it. You get too much radiation from the heating element onto the part, and you'll get hot spots. What you want when you're curing Cerakote is even and consistent and correct temperature. 250 degrees, 300 degrees for normal scenarios, or down to like 150 degrees, 120 degrees if you're doing something like a rifle optic. So having that element covered is gonna be super important, but you also need a circulation fan, right? That makes this a convection oven where the air is being stirred around by the fan and that helps keep that temperature more consistent, which is super important. Insulation. So if your oven is not insulated, it is going to heat your shop, right? And in the middle of winter, that might feel like a good thing. But when you consider year round, it's going to be uh, causing you a higher energy bill because you're going to be wasting heat. And then think about the summer and a small space and a mega, mega heater going into that space. It's definitely not what you want. It's going to, you're going to be sweating. It's going to be like a sauna instead of a professional Cerakote shop. So insulation and then seals, fit and finish, right? The door seal is really important. It's important that it, I suggest one potentially with multiple clamps on it, uh, latches that will keep the door shut and keep it shut evenly so that you get a good seal between the interior of the oven and the exterior space in your shop, right? There are other fit and finish details that are also important, you know, sharp edges that you could get cut on or whatever. Like I've seen a lot of different ovens and some of them are, are pretty basic and a little bit uh, brutal when it comes to those edges and corners and details. And then there's electrical safety. You know, you're pulling a lot of amps. You need to make sure that your electrical outlet is hooked up correctly and that your oven has proper electrical installation and cord characteristics and materials to make sure that you have a safe setup, right? Also think about what kind of support there is if you need replacement parts, instructions on how to repair the oven. It's not likely that you're gonna be sending your oven out, but if you at least have someone to talk to on the other side of the phone to troubleshoot issues that might come up with your controller or whatever it happens to be, maybe a burnt out element, something like that. And then also extras, right? A basic oven that turns on and holds temperature is great to start with. But you do want to think about potentially a more deluxe controller. These ovens, the BAE0200 from Built American, both have touch screens. They both have Wi-Fi connectivity. I can remotely monitor and control them. Those are really nice features to have considering you might be in multiple places 
and to be able to check on your equipment is great and then to use a touch screen to quickly activate the settings that you want also is a huge benefit. Okay, so option number one, we're gonna cover three options here. Option number one is repurposing something into a Cerakote oven. It could be a smoker, it could be a gun safe, it could, I've seen pictures online of a filing cabinet that someone turned into a Cerakote oven. It could literally be any metal box that you wanna take as a starting point and build everything into. So the pros of a repurpose DIY Cerakote build would be that you can save money. Uh, some of the work is done for you because you've got presumably an enclosure or something like that, potentially even a door that opens and closes. And also you could find something local and avoid freight charges. Uh, the cons, time is money, right? So if you're a professional, you wanna be very careful about how much time you put into just the shop and getting ready to work versus how much time you actually are charging customers for billable work, right? Uh, the end result may be a compromise. If you've got a smoker in the middle of your shop and a customer comes in, that's not gonna look super professional, right? When I first was decided I needed to get into Cerakote, I looked at a DIY solution, whether it be converting or building from scratch. I did not even find a good DIY electronics kit and package. You look at these guys' build threads online and some of the discussion, forms and you see just how involved this process can be. And then also when you're done, it's a DIY project. It's not really a, an off the shelf oven. So you, you probably have lower resale value. Okay, DIY option number two is a from scratch build. So this is gonna be kind of like the repurposing build, but you're also gonna build the enclosure from scratch. So pros, you can save money. Pros, you can make it what you want. You're starting from scratch, right? You drop the plans, you make it what you want. This diagram here shows one of the kind of electrical and electronics installation packages, designs that I saw online. It shows you some of the stuff that you'll need to obtain and need to research and study and make sure that it's gonna work properly for you, right? So the cons really, again, time is money and you could spend it's hard to even estimate how many hours. This is a pretty involved project to build, uh, uh, to build a steel enclosure, to insulate it. It's double wall. You've got an outer skin and an inner skin with insulation in between, but then you've got all the electrics. Some of that has to be thermally insulated, right? It gets pretty complicated, right? Again, the end result may be a compromise. You might not have it be exactly how you wanted it. A lot of my DIY projects turn out that way and then I'll do it a second time and I'll make it exactly what I want and I'll learn from doing it the first time. The lack of turnkey kits, again, it's it's kind of a science project of sorts. You're gonna have a lot of little, little things to buy from the hardware store or maybe McMaster Car or other online retailers, uh, Alibaba, wh wherever you get your stuff from, you, you're gonna have to research each component and make sure that it's gonna work and get it and pay for shipping on all those individual orders and that sort of thing. And again, if it's a from scratch build, unless you've done a super, super nice job on it and it looks really professional, it will have you know lower resale value. Okay, so that's the second option. Third option is to just buy a pre-built oven. I know it can be difficult to think about just stepping up and opening your wallet for this kind of a thing, but the pros are time is money, so if you're spending time uh, applying coatings and charging the customer, you have to figure out what your time is worth, right? Is your time worth more uh, as a professional coatings applicator or is it worth more as a DIY builder? And, and that answer will be different for everybody. It'll depend on if you're retired, if this is a hobby, a lot of different factors to consider here, right? Another pro, you're gonna have quality and optimal functionality, right? People that design these ovens go through a lot of iterations, sometimes over decades, to get the design right and to get the materials right and to get the construction and assembly correct, right? There, there's actually more to it than, it's not just a box with a heating element, right? There's a lot more to it than that. And then uh, the, finally, the, the pro is that you're gonna have resale value. I, I should put another one is that you can just get it quickly, right? You can just buy it online, have it, ship to you, yes, it's gonna come freight. You might have to wait a week or something like that, but that's a lot better than a two month project. A lot of us feel like, oh, it's a DIY project, I'll do it in a week. Well, typically things take longer than you think, right? Uh, the cons for the off the shelf oven would be, 
it can definitely cost more. Um, if you don't account for your time cost, it, it can cost a lot more, right? And then also freight charges are non-trivial, right? You might spend several hundred dollars or more on freight depending on who you buy the oven from and you know how much it weighs and the dimensions and, and kind of all that. So I chose not to do the DIY project. I chose to go with an off the shelf oven. I've been happy that I went that route, right? And, and these ovens do everything that I could ever want them to. And I've got two, right? Two ovens is a great setup because you can have one set at a lower temperature, one set at a higher temperature. Let's say you're doing Glocks. You wanna have your slides at 300 degrees. You wanna have your polymer at 150 or 180, whatever that number is. We can definitely do that. So that was my decision. Uh, in conclusion, for hobbyists, I think DIY is definitely an option to look at, right? If you want to start super simple and see if this is going to work for you, if it's going to be something that you're going to do only a couple times, who knows? You might have a smoker that you're going to use outdoors and just get by for a couple times, whatever. If you're a professional, I definitely would urge you to consider just getting an off-the-shelf oven solution and just purchasing one of those, right? Because your time is very worthwhile and it's you'll lose momentum with your business if you get distracted with projects and, and don't focus on those billable hours, that kind of thing, right? So here's what I'd like to know from you all is what did you end up doing for your Cerakote shop or what are you planning to do? Was it a DIY build or was it an off the shelf oven? Drop a comment and we'll have that discussion down in the comments section. And don't forget, the UR5 discount code will save you 5% site-wide. So if you're gonna buy a booth and two ovens or just an oven or just a booth, whatever it is you're gonna buy, UR5 will save you 5%. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content and Instagram, make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. Thanks again for watching.